Artist Studio with brand ambassador and master artist Lauren McCracken. Lauren McCracken is from Fort Worth, Texas, USA, and we're going to have the pleasure of not only seeing some of, of Lauren's artwork, but also his workspace, which is fantastic. Lauren, how are you today? I'm just fabulous, John. It's great to be here with you. It's great to have you. So you're inside, shut in quarantine? Absolutely. Uh, but you know, the, the great thing about that, that's the way a, 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 a watercolorist prefers to be. We didn't realize we were going to set the social standard for the world. <laughs> so Greg, can you uh, give us a quick walk around your studio? Sure. Be happy to, John. Uh, uh, I'm in a relatively small room. It's about uh, 10 feet by 12 feet. And I have set up here pretty much my little cockpit, just like I was flying a jet here. This is where I do, this is where I make the sausage, but I've got everything within arm's length behind me. My, my drafting tape, my X-Acto blade, uh, to my right over here, I've got my shelf that I have all my Daniel Smith paints on. I've got the, the Daniel Smith paints that I use all the time in my palette. And then I've got the Daniel Smith paints that I use as backup here. They're about 40 in here, but then I probably have another 20 specialty colors over here, the Primatex, for instance, that I don't use that often, but they are right where I know where they are. I don't have to search for them every time. And so the whole thing is, is designed like that. I know where my uh, scales are, my, tri my triangles, everything is, is designed so that I don't have to think about anything except what I'm painting. Fantastic. It looks like a great setup. And so Works for me. what yeah. are you working on? Well, I've been working on, uh, since the first of the year, I've been working on a series of commissions that I got at the end of last year. And so that's why I was, I was uh, uh, sheltering in since uh, January and didn't realize all this was happening. And then all of a sudden it happened around me. Uh, here is, uh, here's one I did for a gentleman down in Florida, and I've entered this in a couple of uh, competitions, so it's going to be on display uh, here uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, the interesting thing is, of course, a lot of these uh, competitions have gone online, so the good thing is we got in the show, but don't have to ship the paint. Oh, so, my God. Uh, that's not a bad thing. So no, that's, uh, <laughs> that's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> And I, I have one on the board that I really like to, to share with you. Oh, please. Uh, but the first thing I'd like to, to point out is this is the photograph that I paint from. I make a 17 by 19 inch, uh, I mean, a 13 inch by 19 inch print. And because unless you can really see the details, you can't paint the details. So trying to work from a, a four by six or a five by seven or even a, uh, your, your uh, phone or your, your iPad really doesn't give you this kind of information. And I have been painting on this painting for about three weeks now. It's pretty complex, but it's about 99%. So we'll take a minute here. I'll peel it up and let you see. It. Please, please. This is for a high school. Uh, friend of mine who lives in Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, I went to her house in Jackson, Mississippi. Can you see the photograph? Yes, yeah, see both perfectly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I went and, and, and we set up this, the, she gave me the objects. Uh, I'm not sure I would have uh, selected all of these things, but she told me what she wanted in the, uh, in the thing. I certainly would have never selected asparagus fern. And if I never, have to paint another asparagus fern, I'll be just fine, thank you very much. Uh, and she insisted that we have these uh, very ornate uh, and detailed uh, French uh, lace curtains in the back. And it took me quite a while to figure out how to do them to show enough detail so you know they're fine lace, but without having to paint every little detail in it. That, that could take years. So anyway, it's been a very interesting uh, uh, adventure, uh, trying to figure out the techniques to use to get this level of detail. But uh, 
uh, so far, the, uh, the photographs I sent this lady, she's very pleased. And uh, I, I, I think it represents me and, and watercolor very well. Beautiful. It's beautiful. So one thing I've been asking artists is tips and techniques that they yep. could mention for other people um, to practice or to put inside of their toolbox. Would you happen to have any for us? Sure. I think that one of the most interesting things uh, I've learned, and I've learned this uh, through you and uh, our friends at Escoda, is uh, there is a right way and a wrong way to use your brush. The, the most common uh, brush for a watercolorist is a round. And what I've got here is uh, an Escoda uh, Kalinsky Reserva. Uh, uh, I keep my brushes right next to where I'm painting. These are my uh, Kalinskys, and they, these are the synthetic versatiles that uh, that they make. And I, I, I swap back and forth, depending on, these are stiffer, so when I need more detail, I've got these. If I need something loose and soft edges, I've got these. So, but uh, what most people don't understand is that, uh, uh, of course, when you wet this brush, it, it fills up with paint. I mean, not with paint, I'm sorry, with, with water. And so the question is, how much water do you want to leave in the brush? And how much water do you want to take out of the brush before you dip your brush in the paint? And so what you need to learn how to do is to flick your brush. And you just flick it like that, and the, and the water goes out of it. So, but you have to practice so that you can take 20% of the water out, 50% of the water, or you really sling it, you can take 90% of the water out of the brush. You don't want to take all the water out of the brush because you want a little bit of the water left in the brush so that it works as a vehicle to suck the paint into the belly of the brush. So many painters out there uh, come in in the morning, they wet their brush a bit, and they come over to their, uh, the, the paint that's been sitting there uh, all night, and they dip the tip of their brush in the paint, and then they think they've got it ready to paint. And then they uh, touch the paper, and all that water rushes out of the belly of the brush, and when it comes out, it looks bright and cheerful and full-bodied, but then when it dries, there's nothing there because there's so little pigment and so much water that's, uh, that's been through there. Uh, so uh, so let, let, me, let me demonstrate that. So I'm going to take, I got a brush here that's got nothing but water in it. I'm going to take a little bit of, uh, of phthalo blue and I'm going to just drive out that phthalo. And you can see how that water rushed out of it. Now it looks very, very bright, and, and, and it looks like it's gonna be fabulous. But as I continue on, this will start to dry, and it'll get faded, more faded and more faded. So what I'm gonna do now, what, I, what I've done is I've woken up my paint. I've added some lukewarm water to my paint. And so I've got a really, really rich, 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 rich mixture of phthalo blue. This is phthalo blue red shade, uh, by the by the way, uh, an incredibly versatile uh, blue. So now I've taken my brush, filled it up with water, and I've driven about seventy to eighty percent of the of the water out of the brush. Now I lay my brush into the paint, and it comes out full of paint, the whole belly is full of paint. So it can paint, look at look at that rich, rich paint. Yes. So those people that, that are painting and they feel like, you know, well, uh, let me just tell it like it is. You know, we see a lot of wishy-washy watercolors. And so people that see my paintings and, and other, paintings uh, of, of watercolors from the round of the world sometimes are pretty astonished by the saturation of the color 
And this is the answer to that. If you want more saturated colors, fill the belly of your brush with the paint, not have water in the belly of your brush. Fantastic. That's something. Fantastic. Great, great tip. Fantastic. And you can see the difference so clearly. Yeah, and you see this has started to dry and yeah. it's just going fainter and fainter. It has nothing to do with the quality of the paint. It has nothing to do with the amount of pigment that's there. It has everything to do with how much water is laid over that pigment. Because as you can see here, you couldn't get a more richer phthalo blue red shade than you can from a Dan Smith paint, of course. And this is how you do it. That's phenomenal. Thank you for the tip, both, both using the lukewarm water to wake up your paint and also how to unload your brush to the right amount for you to pick up the most amount of color. Those are two great tips. Thank you very much. Sure, my pleasure. So today we've been in the studio with Lauren. Lauren's given us a uh, quick review of, of how he uh, sets up his studio, which is phenomenal. We thank you so very, very much for your time today, Lauren. And um, please be safe. And I, we look forward to seeing you out and about very, very soon. Thanks, John. It's been a pleasure having you. And I extend a, a, a warm welcome to, to any of my watercolor friends from around the world. If you get anywhere near Fort Worth, you know, as they say in Texas, the porch lights on, come visit. Thanks, John. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, Lauren.